everybody, how's it going out there? Adapa11 here with another Star Wars action figure playset slash vehicle review. Now we're going to go back to 2008 and take a look at the Star Wars The Legacy Collection Millennium Falcon, which is over two and a half feet long, includes two characters, which of course are the Captain Han Solo and First Mate Chewbacca. This of course has electronic lights and sounds along with phrases. So let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful playset slash vehicle. Okay, so we'll go ahead and begin with the action figures. Now, to the right, of course, is the captain of the Millennium Falcon, Han Solo. Now, this version is from A New Hope. Here, we see a little bit of a difference from our standard look that we've seen in the past. And this here is the addition of the headset. Now, this headpiece, of course, is what he was wearing to communicate with Luke Skywalker during their escape of the Death Star. And they were being pursued by the TIE Fighters and went into the weapons area of the Falcon and proceeded to blast the TIE Fighters away. So I like that look. It does not come off and you can see the tubing attaches to the back of his belt. Nice paint detail, I believe. You can see here it's got also, you know, rough marks and whatnot, weathering. Let me see, there we go. You can also see the nice detail on his belt, buckle, his gloves. That's another difference here. He's got his working gloves. <coughs> Excuse me, his battle gloves. Okay. Well, also, since we're here, we'll go ahead and take a look at his blaster. The Greedo Killer. Nice paint detail at the nozzle. Okay. So articulation goes as follows. Let's first of all take a look at the foot peg. Oops. He has our standard foot peg. No articulation at the knees, but does have articulation. I mean, I'm sorry, he has no articulation at the ankles, but he does have ball joint articulation at the knees, bilateral. He has swivel action at the hips and they are somewhat inhibited by well his hips they, i guess they're not inhibited too bad but he has no lateral movement he has swivel action superior well at the waist no abdominal crunch ball joint articulation at the shoulders he has swivel angular action at the elbows that's unfortunate and he has swivel action superior to the wrists much kind of like in the middle of the forearm not quite in the middle but oh well, well he's I, th I like it I like him a lot all right well that's that's Han so let's get on to Chewbacca now this is one of my favorite Chewbacca's I would say the this one is pretty much the same as the black series from Battle of Endor though that Chewbacca has a different variation of the crossbow now we see here it has a nice fit into his hand so we'll start with the look of the crossbow and we can see what I like about it here is we can see it actually literally puts his finger on the trigger here. So that's a nice detail. It was not really that hard to get on. One of them had, a, it was a little difficult to get on at first, but it wasn't a problem. So we can see here, this piece does come off and it just sits right in here. I made the foolish mistake of setting it right here. I don't know why I wasn't thinking, just wasn't paying attention during one of my reviews of the Battle of Endor. So I got it right this time. We can see here that the strap is not as long as the Black Series Battle of Endor. And uh, pretty much the same character. He's got great articulation. You can see the detail in the face. Oops, he's tall. Let's move him back a little bit. Articulation in the face is just fantastic. I mean, a paint detail stuck on articulation. Though it appears that it would appear that we could somewhat move his head. It is really restricted. You, I wouldn't push it. He's got ball, ball joint articulation at the shoulders. He's also got uh, ball joint articulation at the elbows. Which is freaking awesome. So he's got uh, three different midsections. So he's got his upper thorax and he's got his middle and his lower that ties into his waist. So you see one, two, three. 
and that gives them a good abdominal crunch and you know more height of course and I like how they have it lay that layered look of hair in the back pretty cool so I think anyways and then he's got the swivel action at the hips no lateral movement he does have ball joint articulation at the knees and he's even got ball joint articulation at the ankles bilateral here's the hole on the bottom of for the foot action figure pegs fantastic I mean an absolutely fantastic Chewbacca in my opinion all right well, let's take a look at the detail also on his pouch it's not too bad either these also just to let you know these action figure stands were mine I just have them so they wouldn't fall over they did not come with so okay there you go there are the figures so let's get on to the actual Falcon okay here we are at the entrance ramp to the Millennium Falcon but I want to add before we proceed that I did forget to point out the articulation of Chewbacca at his wrists it is swivel action sorry I forgot that all right you see here on the side of the Millennium Falcon is a button. If we push this button, there is an effect that will occur, so as long as you have your batteries inserted. Pretty cool there. Sound effects and lighting effect, and of course you get the automated doors. Now for pictures, I'll go ahead and leave it to you to pause during the diorama photo so you can take a look at certain details so I don't spend too much time trying to narrate the details that you can look at as you pause the photos and take a look. So speaking of looking, let's go ahead and go into the Millennium Falcon and take a look at the goodies that we have awaiting us inside. Okay, next we're gonna need to gain access to the whole of the Millennium Falcon and we will have to take a look on the upper part of the Falcon on the exterior. Now there, here we're going to look at panel number one. Now you can see here is one side of it and the other ends right over here. It's not like the original Millennium Falcon because all this, this is where the battery compartment is. Now there are three buttons here to our left. Now what happens is, is they give us our gun effect. Boy, if my son hears that, I'm gonna have some knocking on my door. That's if we push it once. There we go, excuse me. Let's see if I can get one more. Now here's me just push this shirt. And then if you push it down. Don't worry, it's all together. Oh, excuse me a moment. So again, you press down for more than, you know. Got it! Hold it down for a couple seconds. Great kid! Don't get cocky! That's it! We did it! Might as well just get this out of the way. Hold him off. Angle the deflector shield while I charge up the main guns. Okay, stay sharp. Don't worry. Show all together. Got it! Okay. Got it. So anyways, uh, you get the point. Now here you can see the outline of the first panel. The best point of entry is right here to our far right. Now, I just recently trimmed my nails, but at least you can pinch right here to gain access. This is so cool. So you take it off and you can just take a look at the detail. There's the bottom, let you pause if you wanted to look further. And now we have access to the Millennium Falcon. Let's go to the second button here. Now, I'll have to show you later on, but there is a lighting effect at the thrusters back here. Okay, so here, you can see the some doors that open up an angle because I thought you might want to take a look on the inside and just see the depth. I mean, this is of course could be used as a sleeping quarters, storage bay, um, and then you could of course just pretend that there's access further on if you want to house more than six occupants or crew members, which is. I believe to be the designated uh, number of crew to operate the Millennium Falcon. So this is a pretty cool deal. Just so. to the left of the doors is the medical bay. So of course this is where one would lay for medical assistance. You can see it's right there. 
next to the foot peg and the doors. Now, if we move on over to, to the right of the doors, we see something else. Now, let's get a closer look of the gun turret. Of course, to the right of the doors, across from the medical bay, we have the gun turret station. And of course, it's not to scale. If we did, we'd have a ladder way heading down and another station as this one for that turret down there. I would like to be able to get the camera in there so you can see any detail on the interface, but I cannot quite get it. Oh, maybe I can angle it, but I can't get it in there. So there we have it. Nice paint detail on the chair. I don't even, uh, there we go. You see, there's the turret. Here's the hall. Now here, here's the ramp. An action figure stand, peg. And then right here, if we lift this up, we have a bay for cargo. We're of course in A New Hope. Chewbacca Han Solo, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Luke Skywalker hid. That's pretty cool. So, of course, when they were in the tractor beam and received in the tractor beam and aboard the Death Star. Now you can see here, focus, right here, the sticker always has fallen off since day one. Uh, a lot of the stickers fall off, uh, especially that one. It's just in there with some accessories to a G.I. Joe data frame. It's a computer console. It's actually pretty cool. goes really well with uh, three and three quarter inch stuff. iPhone 7 autofocus, what's up? So anyways, that's where I put the sticker for now because it always falls off. You can see that one is is on there. That one I'm always pressing back on against the plastic. And of course, this is to the cockpit. And that is to a uh, whole area too, which is the gaming area, which we will get into. So before we proceed into the secondary hole area, I wanted to show you another perspective of what we just looked at. To the left here, we have the entrance to the cockpit. And then over here is just above the ramp. You can see the door right here. Um, the stickers, which have remained to stick against the, the wall. And of course, the medical bay. Now over here are, of course, those three buttons. It seems like if I push this one or this one, they're literally the same. So anyways, on the exterior, if we look over here, this is the outline boundary, of course, of the secondary hole area, which wraps around this. So yeah, let's see, push it, keep it, nope, same one. Okay, so now I just wrap right here and pull. Simple as that. Here's the bottom. Now, Cool, we get some really super cool detail over here that I like, but hey, this is old, so I should have get the dust out. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I think I've exhausted pushing buttons over here. So there are two other buttons that are to our lower left, right down here, and I'll start pushing those in a moment. And before we get to the inside, I also want to show you that there is a knob that we'll look at, but since we're at this angle, you push it, and you get two effects. You get the rotation of the radar, and of course you get the movement of the, oh gosh, the target practice mechanism that Luke Skywalker used during lightsaber training um, during A New Hope. So we'll look at that at, a, with, at another angle here in a, in a moment, but I just wanted to show you that this is where you get that effect. So as we see in here, we have these two buttons, and if I push this one on the right. Are to come back at once. You don't know how to fix the hyperdrive. <laughs> you did it. That was keeping it pressed down for more than a second. Now you see a bay right here. Let me move this a little bit. Let me just push this button once real quick. 
see? You can do it. And then you push it again. You've taken your first step into a larger world. With the blast shield okay. I can't even see. How am I so, to the see? detail on the entryway to another area of the Falcon is right there, though there is no real access see? anywhere else to the whole of the Falcon. But it's a nice effect that appears to give us um, that entryway. Now, down here, you can see a clamp. And that's just another cargo bay holding area. We'll take a, we'll have another look at that in just a moment when I advance the camera. Now this is, I suppose, a chair. I haven't really figured that one out. This is a chair guaranteed, of course. We've seen this in A New Hope when our, our uh, captain tells us that uh, his opinion on the Force is definitely in a disagreement with Luke. <laughs> and or Obi-Wan Kenobi. So we have the nice detail here that you can take a look at when you pause the pictures at the beginning, the diorama pictures. A sticker right here I'm constantly have to press against. And our game right here. So let's change the camera angle. But wait, wait, since we've already, bright light. Let's take a look at this button right here. We haven't pushed that one yet and that I think corresponds to the game. I suggest a new strategy or two. Let the Wookiee win. Let the Wookiee win. So you can see here if we push the second button right here. It is related to the gaming pad. And now these figures, they come out. This rotates. So we can see some different angles. Angle. Now if you look here, you can see the detail of the game that's going on between R2-D2 and Chewbacca and A New Hope. These pieces individually do come off, so if this is used as a play toy, you're almost guaranteed to lose those pieces. And even as a collector, if you're not careful, they could be lost as well. So uh, be careful. There's three of them, and they are easily lost. One, two, three. Oops. Yep, one, two, three. Let's get another look. It's not wise, it's a Wookiee. I suggest a new strategy, R2. Now let me hold it down for a couple seconds, see if it changes. It's not wise, it's a Wookiee. I suggest a new strategy, R2. Let the Wookiee win. Okay, if you hold it down, it just plays them all in sequence and the other one is just that Harper hyperdrive so here's an angle of the inside this sticker one of these two I had a problem with remaining on there now here is this I love the detail on this this is just one bad to the bone Carillion cruiser so let me try to get in here hopefully I'm not making anybody sick from this weird camera angle. I'm just trying to demonstrate some of the detail of the sticker here. There we go. Uh, hopefully we can see that. So it has canisters on the bottom, items on the shelf. So I really like the detail of that sticker. That's really cool. The Falcon. Now you can see the piece. You just simply raise it up. You can take it out. It comes out easily. The stickers, I've had a problem with uh, think a couple of these remaining at this one remaining on so you'll have to attend to them uh, periodically and make sure that they stick on there I live in a very dry environment so it's it is what it is I have to deal with the consequences of living in an environment this dry so let's take a look at the inside really freaking cool I think um, these chairs right here they do move so you can manipulate Chewbacca to sit in there which is reasonable <laughs> um, because he's really tall you can see just how far back they go so it gives us really really um, a lot of space a lot of room for movement and I love the detail with the control handles and a better angle for a more detailed perspective of the inside of the cockpit. Really like how this turned out. Of course, you have your own options of 
tagging the dash with uh, light effects, paint effects for lighting. And we can see the detail on the chairs over here. And there's a button right here to the left. What's that flashing? Keep it put, pressed down and... The Lucinator Flicker Show. Photograph yourselves in. I'm going to make the jump to light speed. I don't think holding it down for a length of time You're all clear, matters. Man. <laughs> it controls our cannons. So our cannons on the bottom have two projectiles. If I move this to the left, it makes a sound effect. To the right, it makes a sound effect. But you can see here a little knob. Once you move the lever left or right to touch this, it pushes the button, releasing the projectile. Let's take a look. I dig it. All right, that's a really cool effect. Now, um, there are some other projectiles, so let me go ahead and reposition this camera to show you where they are. Now you see three buttons there, and there are three projectiles, but only the middle button will give us a sound effect right there. This one. The other ones will not. But this one will. Something that's really cool too is this Carillion Cruiser was a, a transport, a cargo ship. It moved really large containers and the cockpit over here on the right was designed and put there so that they could see beyond their cargo. I wish I had a picture to show you, but imagine a mechanism to your cargo that you're hauling would go in here and lock within the Millennium Falcon. And you can see right here the nice details that they put, the gears and the mechanisms, which would likely lock onto the freight and then of course it looks like it has a design that would propose that this would have a sliding mechanism of course it would lock into here and they would push their cargo and be able to see through the cockpit without using uh they wouldn't have to worry about the left side but so hopefully i i, I guess i kind of vaguely described what that design is for and uh you should look it up or on Wikipedia or something. It's really cool. All right, so let's take a look at some more detail on our ship. Over here to the right, we have an on and off button that you can see right here. Of course, if you turn it off, you're not going to get any of the sound effects. And though we were accustomed with back in the well, late 70s, in 80s and of course the 90s of having this is our bay for the Millennium Falcon this is where the batteries go so you can see right here the chamber comes out I don't want to use video time because I'm trying to keep this uh, under you know at 30 minutes or less so you'll just uh, access your batteries right there okay so let's take a look at another really cool option on here that can really make uh, an imagination go wild uh, further on this and this is an, an escape pod luckily my boy has not figured this one out as he comes in here um, he's tried to push buttons because he wants to of course have the ramp come down and he thought that there would be something on this side there is but he hasn't figured that out that you just simply pull on this and it and it's kind of flimsy so be careful and you pop this out and what we have here is an escape pod a really sharp looking escape pod i like this look a lot that is that's a, it's a one-man pod but it's armed fairly well as you can see here we have this slides out so we have two cannons to as assist our hero whoever it may be in an escape and it even kind of mimics the front of the falcon its cockpit but more at a um oh you can see another sticker fell off See what I mean about these stickers? 
That's been years. It's been a couple years since I've opened this up, but yeah, there goes a sticker. So that one I'll have to attend to. It went right there. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, well, that's one thing I guess we'll just have to deal with. I don't, you know, I live in the desert, so it's gonna dry out real, real fast. I don't know if you live, if you live in a moist environment, does this has this happened to your falcon? Though it was boxed for many years. Anyway, so there's the detail on the inside. It's got some paint detail for the at least the leather seat. There's our thrusters. And then of course we have one other weapon right here, a missile. And you can see the button right here. So, I mean, if you think about it, this little guy right here, two cannons, projectile. I like his chances. Nice, sharp looking. I mean, this, this playset, this vehicle, I call it a playset because it has everything as much uh, as a playset is phenomenal. So let's go ahead and, and take a look. If I don't get stuff all wrapped around one another at the inside. But I might have to turn the flash on on the camera. There we go. And there's the detail on the inside. Just slide right in. Okay, you can see the landing gear here. There's two. Two on the other side. One here, one on the other. So again, you'd have two, four, five, and six, and seven. So you have seven pieces for the landing gear. So don't lose them. Now here, we have another cool little option. And this right here is another cannon. Now it's time to wrap this up and get down to the conclusion. When you pull down right here, you'll see this weapon moves left and right. Now I have the projectile out because this button right here, mine is a hair trigger. I, pu I put it back up, it shoots out. I'll just have to make some adjustments. It just so happens to be it's really giving me problems now. So works, but it works too well because it always wants to shoot out. So that's pretty cool. That's our weapon right there. I remember that in Empire Strikes Back. Now, one thing I did forget is I did forget to <coughs> Clarify that the button right here also has effect. As you can see right here. As well as I already show, uh, I believe I showed the thrusters. So I guess that'll do it, my friends. I, I, I'm sorry if I seem hasty. I really wanted to get this in about 30 minutes or at least not exceed 30 minutes. So I apologize if I forgot something. Feel free to educate me and or the future viewers and let me know what I forgot. Um, I think that's, I think that's it. I hope I didn't forget anything, but anyways, thanks for hanging in there. Appreciate a like and a subscribe and stay tuned for more reviews to come. Isn't that a beauty? I give it a nine and a half, maybe a nine, six. This thing is just, wow. You know, a review like this just cannot do this any justice at all. This is a fine, fine, fine ship and playset for three and three quarter inch figures. All right. I really appreciate it, my friends. Take care and may the force be with you. Always.